네, 조규님 시작하셔도 될것 같아요. 네, 시작하도록 하겠습니다. 네. So, hi, this is TA j i h u n and we will start week 6 generative adversarial network. And we will cover basic concepts of GAN and implement vanilla GAN. So in this lecture, we will give basic skeleton code, which includes training structure and sampling visualization and FID evaluation. So what you have to do in this class is you should implement generator and discriminator architecture and noise sampling for GAN and GAN loss. Additionally, I will give you DC GAN code, which will be helpful for your project. And if you have any question, feel free to ask. And for additional question, you can send me emails to me. Okay, we will start. So first thing is prelim. So after we start, uh, before we start, make sure that you do the runtime with the GPU. And then we will set, um, we will set GPU and also load some packages. Uh, we'll just run this code. And also I will give you some sample visualization code that it's already implemented. So you can just uh, define this functions for sample visualization. In this lecture, we'll use MNIST. Uh, I think you already used MNIST in before classes, and or you can use fashion MNIST if you want. Uh, we will practice in MNIST due to the time constraint, but if you want to do other uh, other data sets such as Cypher 10, you can, uh, you can use Cypher 10 in the PyTorch code. However, when using Cypher 10 or other data set, please note that the different, uh, the dimension of the image is different. So your code should be a little bit, uh, uh, you should modify your code a little bit. So you can define your data set as follows. I think we already uh, did this code, so we will go on. And next thing to do is first, you should define your generator and discriminator. So we have a basic skeleton code for here, for generator, and also the discriminator in below. So what you have to do is you will get some input and you should consider the input dimension and then you, you can reshape the input dimension if you need it. And then after the input noise comes in, you should generate an output, which is an image. And then if you want to reshape this, in, uh, this output, then you can reshape it. And also you should define discriminator. So discriminator uh, classifies it whether the image is fake or real, right? So the same structure, uh, you, should, you should implement the discriminator structure by yourself. And then after you define it, you can unload it to the GPU and we will define an optimizer. We'll use Adam in this place, class. And the main thing in the GAN is you should sample a noise from a Gaussian noise. So when you input the noise to a generator, it generates an image, right? So the most important part is noise sampling. So you should implement noise sampling by yourself and then we will train GAN. So we have a basic structure for GAN training and in here we have a question mark like this. So you have to fill out the blanks uh, and then run this code. So it would, uh, I will give you like 20 or 30 minutes to implement this. And please note that, that uh, it takes a little bit time for training. It needs like at least 100 epoch to have a really nice image of MNIST. So maybe uh, if your code runs without any error, I think that is fine. And then I will uh, show you some visualizations and solutions that I already uh, have uh, run. So this is the task for today. And then after you finish your task, then you can visualize your generated samples. And also we will evaluate the FID score. So for the details of FID score, we will cover after you finish your coding. So from now on, I think you can start coding 
your game structure. And if you have any question, you can feel, uh, just feel free to ask. Uh, so do I arbitrarily decide the dimension for the latent space? Yes, you should. Uh, it's a, it is your design choice. You can design any dimensional space, uh, the dimension you want. And since it's a, it is a vanilla again, so you can just use multi-layer perception for generating generator and also discriminator. Thank you.
So the question is, if I want to have a north shape of 100, then what should be the input shape of the linear layer? So first thing, uh, the first question, so 100 means the dimensional of the noise shape, right? And also you will have a batch size, right? So batch size of the noise. And then if you have a 100th dimension, the second dimension, then uh, this is kind of solution. So the input, uh, the input dimension of the linear layer will be 100. And then next one will be the input dimension of the latent space. So it's your design choice. You can do anything. So the next question is, which do I have to output this community logical softmax? So, oh, so the output should be dimensional one. And since it should be zero to one, so you're, you're doing a binary classification task, right? So whether it is, uh, if it is one, then you the discriminator predicts the image as real image. And if the label is zero, then the discriminator will predict as zero, right? So the output of the dimension should be one. And then you can use BC loss on top of that. So for a tip, just a tip. So the final output will be linear something or uh, some dimensional, and you should reduce it by one. And then after you pass all the, if you forward the input, then the output image bat, uh, shape will be batch size comma one. And to use the BCE loss, you have to reduce this dimension into, uh, you should re uh, reduce the axis of axis one. So the shape should be like this. BC loss, uh, so the question is, so it, it, do I, yes, you should wrap the output with sigma. So final should be sigma is something. So if you're running with Colab, please, you should change the runtime session in here and choose GPU on top of it. Should you make values between minus one and one using tonic? So actually, uh, uh, in here, as you can see, our data set, we didn't uh, do any normalization. So the every image is uh, normalized into zero to one. So your generator should generate the image between zero to one. So you should not use ton H for the last output in the generator. Um, so are you using local Or are you using Google Colab for the NVIDIA driver question? It's, no, I think the professor has already answered. So uh, there is a runtime in the Colab and there is a runtime session. You can change the session of the runtime. Yes.
What is the training process in each defined function? Uh, so, uh, I think the uh, question is this this thing, and actually, this you can just ignore this because it's just a it's just a function for saving the GIF file. So, for example, after if you run all the code, I'm I'm currently running the code, but after running all the code, you can get some training process GIF file due to that function. Then it it shows how your GAN is generating across the epoch. So you can see this is the solution. So after you generate, uh, after you train all the code, your GAN will generate a real, more realistic and more realistic code as the training process goes on. And the code is just for saving GIF file. So it is 11 and does anybody need more time? I think it might be a little bit fast to start. So the question is, we are not supposed to get the label from the iteration. So uh, that's right, that's right. Since uh, we don't need any labels from uh, in the general, uh, in GAN, in this case, in this case, since 
we are just want we just want to generate any any data set, not specific class, right? So there is a called conditional GAN. So if you have a true label, for example, is one, then if I condition the label with one, then my generator will only generate the samples with one. However, currently we are not doing such kind of that. We are just we just want to generate any MNIST data set. So we don't need any label from the real uh, from the data loader. Before we start, do you have any questions? You can just feel free to ask. So is the question answered for the uh, for the, uh, the label loader? What is the difference of fixed noise and just noise? So fixed noise is just for uh, saving saving the GIF file. So uh, I, I think I already showed this file. So we just want to show, uh, we just want to uh, visualize the training process. However, if we uh, if we save every image with different noise, then the image will change dramatically, right? So we just fix the fixed noise and then train every, uh, we get the, after every one, one epoch, we get the fixed noise and generate a fake image and then save into a GI file. So then what is the annotation of the real label? Also the real label. So in this case, the data is real, right? So if, you, so it should be one. And here, uh, you're generating a fake image. So the discriminator should discriminate as zero, right? So you should make a label with that has a label of one and the fake label will be zero. I think we are ready to start. So first, we are going to def, uh, def, uh, implement the generator, right? So what is the input of the generator? So it is a noise, right? It's a Gaussian noise. So the input shape will be a batch size and some noise dimension. So you can choose any noise dimension, but it's frequently used as 100. So if you have a batch, uh, shape of 100, batch size and 100, and then you're going to, you want an output shape with same dimension with MNIST, right? Then the batch size, the shape, output shape should be batch size and one channel and 28 and 28. So this will be the input and this should be the output, right? So now uh, we are going to implement multi-layer perceptron. So the one dimension, uh, 100 dimension will come in and then you should define the, uh, define any latent state dimension. Uh, you can choose anything, but in here I will choose 256 and then you should use a, a non-linear function since it's a schemeural network and then we will just have some uh, multi-layer so you can choose any layer number that you want So I will just have two layer, right? And the final layer should be, uh, final layer should be 
28 by 28, since the MNIST image dimension is this one. So the question is no need for dropouts or batch normalization. That is a design choice. However, we are implementing vanilla again, and this is the simplest design choice that you can do. So we are not doing any dropouts or batch normalization, but you can do it, you can do it. So after you pass all the input noise, then the output shape will be, shape of the output currently will be batch size and 28 times 28. Then what you have to do is just reshape the final value. Then you will have a batch of images, fake images. That is the first thing to do for a generator. So the question is what is dropouts or batch normalization? So it's a kind of technique that you can do in the model of architecture. For example, dropout drops, uh, it drops the activation randomly when in, when in the training process. And that is known to help to, uh, for your optimization. So uh, I think dropout and batch normalization is a little bit out of this course. And ah, uh, yes, <laughs> fine. Uh, thank you, thank you. Very, uh, the final sh layer should need sigmoid, yes. Since we're generating an image, the scale should be in size zero to one, right? So you need a sigmoid layer in the last, uh, in the last uh, activation. So for dropout and batch normalization, you can simply uh, search in Google. Yes, and for the discriminator, so what is the input of the discriminator? It will be, uh, uh, before we start, I thought only the discriminator should have the sigmoid. Oh, so, uh, okay, so, uh, the generator should generate a realistic image, right? Of course, it, uh, it, it is not necessary, I think. You can, it is not necessary. It will generate, um, maybe it will generate realistic image without sigmoid. However, our MNIST is currently only existing between zero to one, right? Since we didn't do any pre-processing to the MNIST. Therefore, we are just making the uh, generated image also to be between zero to one. Uh, th uh, thank you for the reference. And so next, the discriminator. So the input of the discriminator will be a fake image, which is generated by the generator and or a real image, right? Then the shape of the input uh, input will be batch size, right? And one by 28 by 28, right? Then before putting into the discriminator, we should uh, reshape the image, right? Since we, the discriminator input will be a linear function in this case. So we will reshape the, discrimin uh, the input shape for the discriminator. So what you have to do is just define, already have, have defined discriminator uh, multi-layer perceptron in the last class. So we will just find any multi-layer perceptron. And the final should be 200 
256 to 1, since it's a binary, binary classification. So you are, you, you are only doing, this is zero if the, if the image is fake, and you're classifying it to 1 if the image is real, right? So the final dimension should be 1. And someone already asked to use the BCE loss we should remove this dimension. Since it's the dimension shape is one, we don't actually necessarily to use it. Okay, so I will finish my coding and then show you the up. And also the solution will be updated in the classroom after the course, uh, after this lecture. So you should re reshape, reshape, this is one option to reshape. Another option should be removing the dimension one. Dimension one is here at this one and dimension zero will be the batch size. So you can use any option. So do you have any question in section 1.1? Okay, thank you. All right, so after defining your discriminator and generator, you should upload to the GPU. Why do we need to change the output shape? So uh, output shape of discriminator, do you mean? Ah, yes, so as I, I already said, so in, the, in this code, we are going to use criterion BCE loss, which is a binary, binary classification loss. And the input of this binary classification, the shape should be like this. So it assumes that every, uh, every input of this binary classification loss is zero uh, the, between zero to one. So, so we can just remove this time, uh, this dimension one. So that is the reason we should change the output shape. It, it is possible BC without output shaping. So I think it might be possible, but I don't know. I don't know everything about the BC loss. So. You can check the PyTorch, PyTorch official uh, site, and there is a docs. You can check any any questions in here. The, the, every source code is opened in the PyTorch. So we'll get back to here. So the, the noise sampling. So the most important thing in GAN is about noise sampling, right? So we sample a noise from a Gaussian noise, a Gaussian distribution, and we input to a generator. So uh, if you look out the PyTorch documentation, you can just or uh, check torch rent, then it randomly, uh, this one randomly uh, sample from the uniform distribution what was the uh, rent n uh, rent n so rent is for uniform distribution and rent n is for um, normal distribution right so with batch size and input shape for the noise. So for example, we are going in here, we already defined that 100, right? So we are going to use 100 in this case. is two, right? And then uh, we will check what is, no, uh, how the noise is sampled. So as you can see, we have a batch size of two with 100 dimension. So this is sampled from normal distribution. This, everything is random. 
And then this will be the input for the uh, generator. So the, the last thing is that you should implement gangles in here. So, and as I already told you, this is just for just for visualization. So if you want to visualize more samples, then you can uh, you can increase this number. And from now on, I will uh, explain with my solution file. So in here, as you can see, we already implemented as the same here, and I used leaked Relu, but you can use Relu instead. And after you've uh, sampled the noise, you should put it on the GPU, upload to the GPU. So the first question was make a real label, right? So what does real label means is that the data is real. So it's not a fake image, right? So we want to input all the images as real and we will call that, uh, we will label as one. So there is a function called to torch ones and you can, if you use this one, it will generate, uh, uh, generate a tensor of this shape filled with one. And then you can just upload to CUDA then that will be your real, real label of the real data set, right? So you want to, what you want to do is to find this gamos, right? So first thing to do, you're putting a real image X into a discriminator, right? So we have this real image data and we have this discriminator and then uh, forward to get a output. And then the DCE loss calculate this log likelihood. So we have this uh, with the label, we can calculate the loss of the uh, real image. And then what we want to do is we want to define this one. Oh, so the fake data. Uh, so this is kind of trick. This is kind of trick, I think. So if you don't uh, detach, uh, detach, then the gradient flows to the, the every gradient flows to the this generator, right? However, in here, you want to update only discriminator, right? Not the generator. Therefore, we want to detach this fake image to, from the computational graph. So you can, uh, as in above, you should sample a uh, Gaussian noise with a batch size and a dimension of 100. And then if you forward the noise, then we will have a fake image, right? So what is the fake image label? So it's the fake image label should be zero, right? So in this case, we are going to use torch zero, which generates a zero tensor with this shape. And then we will calculate LD fake, which stands for this one. And then we will update the D network, discriminator network. The first question is, uh, can we do without detach? So I didn't do it, but maybe you can, if you do it, there might be a memory problem, maybe, because you're not updating generator. And if you do not detach from it, then might, there might be a memory error, might be. And So the next person answered is net G is the generator and net D is the discriminator. Uh, I think there is torch fill, fill or full, I think. But uh, yeah, you can use it, but I'm not I'm not sure you can just replace it. You should uh, you should take the torch document. 
wrap it on with torch, no grid on that line. So yeah, you can do with it. So for example, we are not going to calculate the back gradient back, uh, the back propagation for the fake image, right? So you can do torch, no grid. And that is, so I think that is a wonderful uh, suggestion since it reduces the memory. We can do this. Uh, the batch size means the size of the image. No, so the batch size, so size of the image is already fixed, right? So the image size is one channel and 20 pixel and 28 pixel. But we want the batches of image, right? The, the like, we want like 100 image at once. And that is the batch size. For example, 200 image at once. Yes, thank you. So, so this is the update for discriminator. And next one is the generator. So what the generator wants to do is it wants to fool, fool the discriminator, right? So we want to generate our output label, uh, output image that can fool the, that maximizes this, this loss. So in here, the important thing is that you should generate it, the label with one that since you want to fool it, right? So the label is torch once with this batch size and with the fake image, you can, uh, you can update the gradient of this G network. And sorry about that. If you want, uh, if you want to use torch no grad, then you have to sample the fake image once again in here. Uh, since uh, this code is not good, since uh, the fake image generated in this line is used for the, net, uh, the G network update. So if we, so, that's the reason why we should not use torch no grad. This is the proper code. So if you run this code, uh, you will have a generator, can, uh, gen you can train a generator that can fool the discriminator. So this is just saving the output with GIF file and you're just saving the model in every epoch. So after the generation, after this all iteration, you will have something like training process GIF file. And let's see how the generator have generated the MNIST. So this, this is already plot in here. So in the beginning place, the GAN doesn't generate any realistic image. It's like a Gaussian noise, right? However, as the time goes by, it starts to generate some realistic image. It's getting more realistic and more realistic, right? So after you generate all, if, after you train your GAN, you want to evaluate, right? That is the next step. That is the, no, I will I explain after we see this visualization. Yeah, so in the, uh, as you can see, the GAN really generates a realistic MNIST, right? Oh, so, so in your cool app, there will be this folder, right? In this folder, we already, uh, we are running every code inside this folder. So there will be an image folder that we already created. And in print GIS file. And you just double click this one. So,
So I think the question is about the GAN uh, updating G network. And to do that, uh, so in this part, we generate the label with one to fool the discriminator and then calculate the error and then optimize with the optimizer. Then we can train update on generator. So any more questions? So we'll move on. Uh, how, why do we use fixed noise? So uh, fixed noise is for just the visualization. So uh, as you can see, we, we want to see the training process. How does it goes on? So to visualize this, we, have, we need a fixed noise. And after every epoch, we will generate a fake image and then save into a list and make this GIF file. And if we doesn't fix the noise and sample it every epoch, then we all, we don't, we cannot see the changes. It will just randomly uh, generate the image. So the next part, is about evaluation. So GAN evaluation is a really hot topic, was some hot topic. And what you want to do is evaluate this generated sample. It is realistic or not. And older days, they think training loss was the best thing, but many papers have discovered that training loss might not be the best metric. And the famous metric, there is two, uh, is one called inception score and one is called uh, FID score. Uh, so in this course, we'll handle FID course in this lecture. So the question is, if it gives me error running the code for batch size and two, well, I'll put size being, I think, you should set drop past option for data load. Oh, okay. So thank you for, I think, yeah, that, uh, thank you for the suggestion. I think that that might remove your error. So I see that we already covered the FRD score in the class. And if you want to see any more details, you can click this article or paper to see the uh, details. So for the FID score, we use pre-trained ImageNet, um, inception network that is pre-trained on ImageNet. And then we calculate the distance, the distribution distance between real data set and fake data set. So we need mean and covariance extracted. And then we are going to calculate the discrepancy between that distributions. So every FID score is already implemented in GitHub. And I just, uh, I, just uh, I just modified a little bit to use in this course. And this is just downloading code for inception and FID score. So after you download all the code, you can just evaluate your FID by this code. So in here, uh, we only evaluate on the training data, a test data set. So we are going to load the test data set of MNIST and then use data loader. And actually you have to sample all, uh, you, you have to use all the test data set to calculate mean and covariance of the real data set. However, only 50 samples. And also those we will use only 50 samples. So after you curate, you get the real data set and the noise, then uh, the fake data set, which is generated by this noise, then 
we'll save into a folder and then calculate the FID score. And the calculated FID score is like this. We don't usually calculate FID score in NIST since, uh, as I already mentioned, it is pre-trained on ImageNet and the dimension, we don't have any NIST-like data set in the ImageNet. So we don't usually use M FID score in MNIST. However, in Cypher or other data sets, we can use uh, such inception scores and FID scores. So I think this is the, all of our lecture. And additionally, what you can do is change your GAN and discriminator structure. So we used a multi-layer perceptron. However, uh, MLP is really hard to train for GANs. It is unstable. So there are so many architectures in, in modern, modern era. So you can use DC GAN. This is just an example. So I will give you the implementation of this again. And please note that this version is 64 and 64 resolution. It generates 64 and 64 resolution with three uh, cases, channel is three. So you can modify this code to generate other kinds of uh, images. And also I can, uh, use the discriminator for such, uh, such DCC GAN code. So if you want to run DC GAN tutorial, there is a PyTorch official tutorial in this, uh, in, for DC GAN, you can run it. And if you have any question, you can feel free to ask. And, um, and this is the end of today's lecture. Thank you. So the first question is maximize and minimize. Uh, also, so yeah, it is a min max approximation. And so the discriminator is trying to, uh, the, so I divided into D, D update and gene uh, update which is maximizing, uh, this, is just, uh, this is minimizing the losses, losses for, this is minimizing. So it minimizes the loss for the discriminator. And the next update, the G maximizes the discriminator loss to full, full, the, full the discriminator. So this is the day. 네, 그거 맥시마이즈 맞을 것 같은데요. 아, 맞, 맥시마이즈 맞네. 아, 네, 네. 감사합니다. 네. 네. 아, 제가 그냥 추가 설명을, 오케이, okay, so just to, uh, yeah, just to explain how the min max is doing, uh, is done here is that you can see that the real label is set to one and the fake label is set to zero for the update D network sec segment. But if we go down to the update G network sec segment, uh, the labels, uh, yeah, fake. So yeah, the, the labels for the fake are now ones. You can see that the second line below the update G network comment, the label equals to torch ones, even though the, the, one, the batch, even though the ones that are being input to the criterion is a fake, so that the the labels are reversed, if you if you can understand the code. Like for the D network update segment, real label is one, fake labels are zero. But in the G update update G network segment, the fake labels are one now. So the labels are reversed, and that's how you like re reverse the role of the min max. Uh, is that is that the is that answer clear? Is everybody on the same page? Uh, 성, 성원님, 그리고 소정님. 네, 그러니까 지금 여기가 마이너스가 없거든요. 지금. 지금 다제 말씀, 얘기 들리시나요? 
그러니까 지금 로스 그 민맥스라 그래 가지고 사실은 이제 민맥스가 아니라 맥스맥스 였잖아요 우리 그 수업 때 기억하시면은 사실 그 민맥스가 아니라 맥스맥스로 이퀘이션을 바꿨었는데 여기서도 마찬가지로 맥스맥스죠 지금 커멘트를 보시면 화면 보시면 맥시마이즈 그러니까 업데이트 디 네트워크 쪽도 맥시마이즈고 업데이트 지 네트워크 쪽도 맥시마이즈인데 그래서 둘다 맥스맥스죠 그리고 그 다음에 이제 위쪽에서는 제대로 그러니까 업데이트 디 네트워크 쪽에서는 제대로 리얼 이미지는 1 페이크 이미지는 0이라고 레이블을 주고 이제 저 크로스 엔트로피를 맥시마이즈를 하고 있는데 밑에 업데이트 지 네트워크 쪽에서는 요 수식 있잖아요. 로그 dgz 이거를 맥시마이즈 하려고 그러는데 이걸 이제 그럼 1로 맥시마이즈 해야 이걸 dgz가 1, 1로 나오도록 해야 되는 거거든요. 그래서 이제 레이블을 1로 설정을 하고 torch o n e 로 설정해놨잖아요. 레이블이 꼴 torch o n e 로 그거가 이제 바로 이 맥시마이즈 하게 되는 원리입니다. 이해되셨나요? 아 근데 저기에 사실 네, 뭐 써놓기 이제 로그 디지제트로 써놨는데 지금 BC로 쓸 쓰고 있기 때문에 아 이제 미니마 로 저거에 마이너스가 붙었다고 생각하시면 돼요 그냥 BC로 쓸 쓴다는 것 자체가 저 수식에 마이너스가 저절로 이미 붙어 있다라고 생각하시면 됩니다 그렇기 때문에 이제 네네 네, 감사합니다 네 감사합니다. 그 so, uh, any more question? I hope it was a very I think it was a very like informative tutorial. Uh, and as a uh, TA announced um, partially announced it, what what we will do for the project is that uh, we will use DC GAN to generate a bit of a more high resolution images, fake images. So not necessarily MNIST, but we'll pick the right one, potentially ImageNet or maybe Celeb A faces. Uh, we'll, we'll, we're actually working on the detail, but, uh, but the overall structure is to use DC GAN to generate higher resolution images and then submit the images or submit the collab itself to, so that we can evaluate the quality of your fake samples. Uh, we will announce the details of the project next Tuesday uh, uh, when, when we get back to the uh, theory class. And I assure you that it won't be a very, it won't be like a difficult task. You already have the DC GAN source code provided by, provided by the TA. So no worries there. You can just simply, you know, swap the DC GAN code with the one that you've implemented here and then try to run it and, you know, use just, just use a different data set, which is already in the PyTorch framework. So, so yeah, no need to be concerned too much. Okay, so if there are no more questions, uh, as TA said, this is the end of the end of the practice session, and we will I will see you guys next Tuesday. Bye bye. Let you in to watch me back. 끝내도록 할게요. 네, 감사합니다. 네, 감사합니다.